T.O. Healed the Paternal Wound Chapter 3, Types of Parent-Child Wounds In this chapter, we will delve into the exploration of these wounds, using practical cases where it will be easier to see them reflected. We'll observe how they manifest in different life situations. First, let's understand that wounds of abandonment, emotional absence, and criticism can manifest in diverse ways, but they share a common underlying theme. On the other hand, it's crucial to comprehend the impact of roles within the family context. When a paternal wound exists, children often assume specific roles, particularly with their mother and younger siblings. However, it's important to note that roles can vary based on gender. In other words, the role of a daughter is not the same as that of a son, at least historically speaking. In the case of daughters, the influence of cultural and patriarchal norms has defined different expectations and demands. Historically, a father has not looked at a malakild in the same way as at a daughter. This is due to social patterns that have established different roles and responsibilities for men and women. Therefore, when there is a wound of abandonment, the experience can have a differentiances due to what the father represents in each case. Moreover, the roles that a son takes on with the moth are not the same as those assumed by a daughter in the absence of the father. Let's explore how these dynamics and roles can influence circurrent lives and relationships. We will analyze practical cases that will help us identify and better understand the swounds, allowing us to find ways of healing and transformation. The different roles of children due to the paternal wound roles are the postures and behaviors that we develop in our relationships. They are like disguises we put on in our relationships, especially within the family. Sometimes, we find ourselves taking on responsibilities that aren't really ours, just to fill an emotional void within the family unit. We do it automatically, without much thought. We think that if we didn't do it, no one else will. But here's the key thoughts or lesser and truly ours. We put on that mask because we feel it's our duty, that we have to sacrifice ourselves for others. But you know what? That's not fair to us. We're neglecting our needs and desires, and it's holding us back. To change this, we need to become aware of what we're truluent and set healthy boundaries. We have to understand that we're not responsible for filling the emotional voids of others. Each person has to do their own work of growth and healing. It's time to break free from those patterns and release yourselves from the roles that don't belong to us. We need to be authentic, respect ourselves, and take care of our well-being. We can't keep wearing the mask and sacrificing ourselves for others and everything. We can lean aren't generous and considerate without sacrificing ourselves. When we are forced to take on roles that don't belong to us, feelings of resentment and internal frustration arise. It's important to recognize that if we are parents, our role is to be a mother or father, and that is a valuable responsibility. But when we are children and are compelled to take on the of a father or husband to our mother, we are occupying a position that doesn't belong to us. This creates an internal imbalance and affects our emotional and mental well-being. In adulthood, the lack of having lived in our Troplacius children seeks compensation. This can manifest in various ways, such as a mother acting more like her own daughter's daughter instead of fulfilling her maternal role, or a mom behaving more like his wife's son rather than being her husband. The unconscious mind stores these emotional voids, and when the opportunity arises to fill them, it does regardless of whether it's the right time or not. The unconscious mind doesn't understand logic or time it simply seeks solutions in the most illogical way for us. The healing of these wounds lies in listening to our unconscious mind and giving coherence to our story. It's necessary to release the stored emotional impacts and dundoth emotional blocks and negative thoughts that originated from these wounds, if we truly desire to have an authentic, coherent, and fulfilling life. It's encouraging to see that nowadays, the importance of Themether's influence on her children and how they perceiveth family environment is being emphasized through emotional education. During the early years of life, the mother plays a crucial role in shaping how the child perceives and emotionally responds to the world. The way the mother views the father directly impacts the child as they are growing up. If you're reading this as a child, it's not about blaming your mother, but understanding the mechanisms at play. We are here to heal wounds and release resentments, seeking a path of reconciliation and personal growth. Let's now explore different roles that children take on towards the mother to compensate for the dysfunctional father role. Wound 1. When dad is emotionally absent. When a father is emotionally absent, it's as if there's a void in his children's hearts. He might be there physically, but he's not truly there emotionally. 
He doesn't show the love, support, or attention that children desperately need. It's as if their feelings don't matter or are being ignored. Imagine being a child and yearning for your father's lovey and approval, yet always feeling like you're searching for some ethane you can't find. You wonder what you'd have drawn, why he doesn't love you, or why he can't show you the affection you need. This lack of emotional connection creates a deep sense of insecurity and rejection. You feel invisible, as if you don't matter. These wounds take root in the hearts and minds of the children and can impact their self-esteem and their ability to trust others. They may grow up with a sense of emptiness and a constant search for external validation, trying to fill the void that the father left. It is essential to pay attention to how the mother reacts to Thebes and father's attitude as well. Her response can vary from aggression and anger to silence or even taking complete control of the household. These behavior patterns can have a significant impact on the children and how they perceive the world. If the mother responds aggressively, the children might internalize that anger and direct it towards themselves. They may feel guilty or responsible for the father's emotional absence, which adds to their emotional burden. On the other hand, if the mother responds with silence, the children might interpret it as a denial of their own feelings. They may feel they don't have permission to express their pain or need for affection, potentially leading to harmful emotional repression. In some cases, the mother might take full control of the household as a way to compensate for the father's absence. However, this can create an unbalanced dynamis in family, where the children are trapped in roles that aren't theirs, and they are denied the opportunity to develop their own identity. In this reading, the examples provided are general and deemed to for an initial understanding of the topic. However, it's crucial to address these issues in a personalized manner, acknowledging the uniqueness of each experience and the impact it can have on the lives of each person involved. The role the son takes towards the mother when dad is absent. When dad is not around, the son takes on the man of the house, for mom. He becomes her companion, always ready to please her and be her confidant. He feels the responsibility to fill in for what the father hasn't done. He carries that burden and blames himself if he sees Momsador dissatisfied. At the same time, he rejects the father's attitude, and competition with him can arise. When mom praises Thesen, there may be an ironic feeling towards the absent father. With all of this, it's as if the son tries to fill the void left by the father and becomes an important figure in mom's life. But underneath, there's a mixture of love, resentment, and confusion towards the absent father. The son might constantly seek mom's approval and validation, because his relationship with the father has been affected. In other cases, it also happens that the son seeks to have the mother validate the father through him. What else happens here, especially when the children are adults and have partners? In these situations, adult children can unconsciously give their mother a special power over their opinion, valuing it more than that of their future spouse when they get married. This can have a significant impact on romantic relationships, generating emotional and loyalty conflicts. It's as if mom's voice carries disproportionate weight in decision making and in how the child interacts with their partner. There might be a feeling that if mom doesn't agree or doesn't approve of the partner, then something is wrong. This dynamic can lead to a constant search for mom's approval, even in adulthood. The role that the daughter takes on towards Themo when dad is absent. When dad is absent, the daughter assumes a specific role towards the mother. It's common for the mother to demand more from the daughter than from the son and to pay less attention to the daughter's emotional needs than to the son's. The daughter may feel unworthy of receiving love and affection, which can impact her future relationships. The mother may burden the daughter with emotional responsibilities, and she may become her mother's emotional support. On the other hand, this internal tension may lead the daughter to seek male partners who are also emotionally absent or who do not display strong masculinity. There can be a dynamic in which the daughter constantly seeks the love and approval she didn't receive from her absent father in relationships with men. In some cases, the daughter may even adopt a controlling and dominant role over her husband's or partner's. This can be way of attempting to fill the emotional void and lack of support she experienced in her relationship with her father. However, this dynamic can generate tensions and conflicts in her romantic relationships. Wound 2. When dad is physically absent. When it comes to a wound of abandonment or loss due to their father's passing, the experience can be different from emotional absence. In these cases, there isn't a role model to follow, and the wound can be felt as a sense of lacking deservingness in life and opportunities for growth in the world. 
How the mother copes with this absence will have an impact on how the children are affected. If the mother manages her own grieving process in a healthy way and provides a supportive and loving environment, she can help mitigate some of the negative effects of the loss. However, if the mother becomes immersed in her own pain and is unable to provide the necessary emotional support, the daughter may experience a sense of helplessness and feel even more devalued. It's important to understand that each experience is unique and emotional responses can vary. Some sons or daughters may find other supportive figures in their environment, such as family members or close friends, who help fill the void left be the father's absence. This can provide them with a sense of belonging and the necessary emotional support for healing and growth. However, in other cases, the wound of paternal absence can lead to challenges in the child's trust and self-esteem. There might be a feeling of incompleteness. Wound 2. When dad is physically absent. When it comes to a wound of abandonment or loss due to the father's passing, the experience can be different from emotional absence. In these cases, there isn't a role model to follow, and the wound can be felt as a sense of lacking deservingness in life and opportunities for growth in the world. How the mother copes with this absence will have an impact on how the children are affected. If the mother manages her own grieving process in a healthy way and provides a supportive and loving environment, she can help mitigate some of the negative effects of the loss. However, if the mother becomes immersed in her own pain and is unable to provide the necessary emotional support, the daughter may experience a sense of helplessness and feel even more devalued. It's important to understand that each experience is unique and emotional responses can vary. Some sons or daughters may find other supportive figures in their environment, such as family members or close friends, who help fill the void left be the father's absence. This can provide them with a sense of belonging and the necessary emotional support for healing and growth. However, in other cases, the wound of paternal absence can lead to challenges in the child's trust and self-esteem. There might be a feeling of incompleteness. The role that the eldest son takes on towards Themo Thurwin the father abandons or dies at an early age. When a father leaves or dies at an early age, the eldest son may take in the role of supplementing the father's role in the family. He will feel the need to be mature at a young age and carry an excessive burden of responsibility. Additionally, he will experience the sensation that he must protect his mother, and at times, he may feel like he's assuming the role of Afather towards her. This process of taking on additional responsibilities can lead to accelerated growth in Hildeston. He often becomes an emotional and practical support for his mother and younger siblings. He may develop a sense of responsibility for the family's well-being and feel the need to take care of all aspects of the household. The eldest son will tend to supplement the father's role, and if he doesn't do it, the next child will. He will assume an early maturity and excess of responsibility. He will feel that he needs to protect his mother. Sometimes he will feel like he's the father to his mother he might even end up controlling her and in some specific cases, they can become tyrants to their mother. The role that the daughter takes on towards Themo Thurwin the father abandons or dies at an early age. In the case of daughters, similarities can be observed with thoroughly assumed by the eldest son in situations of father's abandonment or early death. The older sister, similar to her male counterpart, can take on the father's role and assume a significant burden of responsibility at a very young age. Thesis due to the need to compensate for the lack of protection and support from the parents. It's common for older daughters to take on a protective role towards their younger siblings and their mother. They may feel responsible for taking care of everyone and making important decisions within the family. This can include taking care of the household, providing emotional support, and making decisions related to the upbringing of younger siblings. Unfortunately, due to the absence of a father figure and sometimes also the lack of proper protection from the mother, daughters can be more susceptible to accepting abuse from third parties or being exploited. This is because they didn't feel the protection and support of their parents, which can lead them to seek security and acceptance in your health relationships. It's important to recognize that this dynamic can have a significant impact on the lives of older daughters. They may experience feelings of overexertion, emotional exhaustion, and a sense of losing their own childhood. Additionally, they may struggle with establishing healthy boundaries and developing a strong self-esteem. It's crucial for older daughters to have access to supportive resources, such as specialized therapy or support groups, where they can explore and process their experiences.
It's also essential to foster a safe and trusting environment where Thiefy feel heard and validated in their emotions and needs. Wound 3. When Dad criticizes everything negatively, a father who constantly belittles his children can have a significant impact on their growth. It's very likely that the children will seek other role models outside of Thihome because they don't feel valued in their own household. Imagine having good ideas and projects, and your dad tells you things like, that won't get you anywhere, nun will value you, don't waste your time, what you just died is foolish, you'll never succeed, no matter how hard you tree, there are many people better than you. Behind those phrases lies a deep wound in your dad shared, which may stem from his own relationship with his father. What he's doing is passing on his own frustration and pain to, hurting you in the process. A father who rejects his child's virtues is a father who has rejected parts of himself. It's possible that this father may have experienced abuse or mistreatment in his own life, which has left deep wounds in his inner child. As heir salt, he finds it difficult to establish a positive connection with this child. Instead of offering support and recognition, this father focuses on showing the child that they are worthless and need to learn how tough life can be. These parents may turn to alcohol as a form of escape, or they may display competitiveness with their children, always trying to prove that they are superior in talent and skills. This negative and critical attitude from the father is a result of his own desire to prove to his own father that he also has value. Unfortunately, he does this through his child, standing out of and more and, in some cases, even humiliating the child. It's important to recognize that the behavior of this type of father is not the child's fault. The child is not responsible for the wounds and traumas of the father. However, this doesn't mean that the child should accept or tolerate this negative treatment. It's crucial to establish healthy boundaries and seek ways to heal both your own emotional wound santos of your father. These attitudes and words reflect a cycle of pain and resentment that repeats from generation to generation. Dude it's important to understand that you're not responsible for your parents' wounds and unfulfilled expectations. You shouldn't carry that burden of guilt. Any obstacle we face in our current life, whether in your work, our romantic relationship, or how our children perceive us, is related to the need to heal our relationship with our father. It's important to recognize that the excessive criticism and the pain that this criticism left in our past have left a mark anew in ourselves. To find healing, we must emotionally fulfill that internal demand for paternal approval. If we fail to meet this internal need, it's likely that when we become apprentice ourselves, we'll seek validation through our own children. However, this only creates more imbalance and never manages to fill the inner dissatisfaction. True healing occurs within ourselves, by forgiving the wound and creating a space of self-love. It's important to connect with the fatherly strength within us, recognizing our worth and nurturing our self-esteem from our own inner core. By healing the relationship with the father, we release the limiting patterns and find a more solid emotional balance. Remember that you have the power to heal and transform your emotional wounds. Through forgiveness, self-love, and connecting with your inner strength, you can find healing and live a more fulfilled and authentic life. The role that the child takes towards the mother when the father is critical. When the father is critical, the child can assume different roles towards the mother, such as the weak, the absent, the independent, the distant, or the demanding. These roles develop as defense mechanisms to cope with the father's constant criticism. As a result, the child may quickly become independent and emotionally distant from the family. In other cases, they may seek refuge and affection from the mother, becoming dependent on her. The child may perceive each mother as good and the father as bad, creating an emotional conflict between independence and dependence. The unconscious desperately seeks to receive health alone support. The child flees from the feeling of not being enough on their own and feels the need to prove their worth. However, deep down, they carry an emotional burden in their struggle to prove their value. Emotional insecurity often accompanies these types of situations. If there are siblings, there may be a dynamic of criticism and competition between theme instead of relationship based on love and trust. Negative comparisons and criticisms can be frequent, further complicating the building of strong and healthy relationships among siblings. It's important to recognize that the roles assumed by the killed in response to the father's criticism are strategies for survival and emotional protection. However, it's crucial to heal these wounds and break free from the negative patterns that have developed. The role that the daughter takes towards the mother when the father is critical. 
When the father is critical, the daughter tends to assume different roles towards the mother. She may become the close friend of her mom, the person she trusts and seeks emotional support from. However, despotethis closeness, the daughter may experience an emotional void in her relationship with both her mother and father. She doesn't feel comfortable expressing her feelings or concerns, as he doesn't perceive a safe space to do so. The role of the daughter will be both servile and independent as her subconscious recognizes that she cannot fully trust her pen up emotionally. If the father is critical and themother controlling, the daughter may respond similar light thesen, feeling the need to prove her worth but carrying internal insecurity. She may fear judgment and negative control, leading her to adopt an attitude of independency and emotional distance. At times, she may take anthrolio for mediator in conflicts between her parents. It is common for the daughter to not feel beautiful or secure in relation to her body, as she hasn't received positive validation from her father. This can generate insecurity and low self-esteem regarding her physical appearance. Wound 4. When a father abuses through force. As we mentioned earlier in Chapter 1, wounds caused by physical abuse or mistreatment leave significant scars. These impacts are imprinted in the mind and body throughout for ambulance, resulting in a significant emotional blockage and future emotional difficulties, especially in forming personal relationships and believing in deserving abundance in life. It's important to understand that patterns of physical abuse or mistreatment often come from previous generation synthomale line of the family. In these cases, there's a tendency to repeat the same pattern from one generation to the next, until someone decides to break this cycle and heal. Healing the family's male lineage is a topic we will address in detail in another chapter. The role that the son takes towards the mother when dad abuses or mistreats. When dad abuses or mistreats mom, the son takes on the role of defender and protector of his mother. A guilt-laden bond is formed with the mother, and Thesson often believes that he is responsible for his mother's suffering. If the son is also mistreated and the mother allows it, a deep sense of emptiness and unworthiness can develop, which may persist throughout his life if not addressed. In Thessa cases, it's more likely for the son to adopt an independent role with an attitude of frustration towards life and challenges. The son who has witnessed or experienced abusive mistreatment tends to struggle to thrive in life. There's an ingrained and subconscious fear that limits his personal and professional growth. The son might feel fear of standing out, of shining in his career, or of pursuing opportunity as forsex, as the experienced abuse has left deep emotional scars. There's a fear of receiving the same violent or abusive treatment they witnessed at home, which can paralyze them and prevent them from daring to pursue their goals and dreams. Additionally, the subconscious interprets the fact that their father mistreated them as a sign that they are not worthy of love and value. This subconscious belief can profoundly affect the son's self-esteem and perception of self-worth. It's important to understand that these beliefs are distortions created by trauma and do not reflect the reality or thetra worth of the son. Healing these wounds involves challenging and replacing those limiting beliefs with more positive and self-loving thoughts. The role that the daughter takes on towards Themother when dad abuses or mistreats. Assumes a similar role atothotof the son that of defender and protector of mom. However, these wounds can also generate resentment towards the mother for allowing a child to suffer abuse. It's important to understand that the role of a son or daughter shouldn't beto protect their mother, as this creates an unbalanced and unhealthy dynamic within the family. These dual wounds, both the paternal and maternal wounds, can leave a deep void in the daughter. It's a lack of love and support from both parents. This emotional void can create imbalances not only on an emotional level but also mentally in some cases. The daughter may experience difficulties in her relationships, self-esteem issues, and a constant sense of insecurity. On the other hand, they may unconsciously seek partners who reflect similar dynamics to what they've experienced in their childhood. This could be due to various factors, such as seeking familiarity, or a subconscious belief that it's what they deserve or know. Some daughters might be drawn to partners who exhibit abusive or manipulative behaviors, as these are patterns they've witnessed or experienced in fearfully environment. They might seek relationships where they can take on the role of protector or caregiver, attempting to mend the dysfunctional dynamic from the past. However, it's crucial to recognize that these partner choices don't lead to healthy and balanced relationships. The keto healing is becoming aware of these unconscious patterns and working on strengthening self-esteem, establishing healthy boundaries, and choosing partners who truly respect and value the individual.
How does the paternal wound manifest in our relationships? The paternal wound can have a significant impact in our relationships. This wound is projected in various ways in our daily life. It affects how we see ourselves and how our latido others. Even if we are not aware, we are always connected to ourselves the question is, to which part are we connected? Most of the time, it's to our wounds. Our unconscious mind constantly projects what we haven't processed. Childhood wounds continue to affect our romantic and professional relationships. For instance, if we've experienced betrayal in the past, we might struggle to trust us in our current relationships. We can be overly cautious and fearful of being hurt again. Another common wound is constant criticism. If we grew up in an environment where we were constantly criticized, it's likely that we carry the critical voice within us. We might be very hard on ourselves and feel dissatisfied with our achievements. We can now so be really sensitive to others' criticisms. To better understand the mechanism of all this, let's look at some examples of wounds and how they are projected. A man who doesn't argue or give his opinion because of his parents used to. Luis is married to a controlling woman who always has the final say in family decisions. He prefers to stay quiet and avoid any kind of disagreement with his wife. He doesn't know how to communicate properly and easily gets frustrated when it comes to making decisions together. All of this has its roots in a childhood wound related to const fights between his parents. His father used to raise his voice, and his mother even more, leading to endless battles at home. When Luis was a child, he rejected that situation and promised himself he would never be like his parents. However, now as an adult, he shows indifference when his wife asks for his opinion to plan a vacation. His wife is tired of carrying the entire burden on her shoulders, tired of pulling the cart. Despite Luis's efforts, Hetzant improved the situation because his unconscious mind made a decision a long time ago to avoid expressing his opinions and arguing. Even though he has forgotten those memories, he continues to sabotage harmony in his home. Luis's children have grown up and have their own partners know. They have sought submissive women with little ability to argue, in other words, they take the lead. Thier following their father's pattern, but this time in reverse. However, this imbalanced family dynamic has led to complaints, lack of harmony, and resentment. The healing process for both Luis and his children lies in accepting the origin of the wound. The moment Luis decided to reject his parents and affirm, I will do my best to avoid arguments, he established a pattern that his children would inherit. One of Luis's sons, named Pablo, chose to seek therapy and manage to heal this pattern in his life. Through therapy, Pablo worked on himself and healed those negative patterns had inherited. As a result, his romantic relationship significantly improved. He learned to communicate more effectively and express his needs without fear. In this case, healing led to an enhancement in Pablo's relationship. A woman is not satisfied with her progress due to an unconscious wound with her father. He you said to call her foolish when she had creative ideas and future plans. Let me tell you Maman's story. When she was a child, she had big dreams and aspirations for her future. She dreamed of becoming a university professor and having a life full of successes. However, her parents, who were hardworking and had limited resources, didn't share her enthusiasm. Instead of supporting her, they would say hurtful things like, don't be foolish or, you'll never amount to anything. These negative words from her parents left a deep wound in Maman's heart. From that point on, she decided to keep her dreams silent and be a good girl to avoid injuring her parents. She felt guilty if she expressed her desires and longings. As Maman grew up, studied, and got married, her husband encouraged her to continue pursuing her dreams and furthering her education. With a lot of effort and thanks to scholarships, Maman managed to become a professor and secure the job she had always desired. However, despite her success, something didn't feel right within her. She carried a sense of guilt and sadness that accompanied her constantly. This was their salt off the wound caused by her parents. In her unconscious, she still heard those voices that called her foolish for having future plans. These unresolved voices prevented her from fully enjoying her achievement. In fact, Maman was on the verge of quitting her job as a professor because she felt that all the effort wasn't worth it. However, everything changed when Maman realized that thainer void she felt was a product of her parents' voices, voices that hadn't been healed yet. From that moment on, a new enthusiasm and passion for her work were born within her. She realized that what was preventing her from fully enjoying her success was a wound from the past that still held her back. 
Maman began to work on healing that wound and freeing herself from the guilt and sadness that accompanied her. Ash progressed in her healing journey, her enthusiasm and passion for her work strengthened. Finally, she was able to fully enjoy her success and find satisfaction in her career. Maman's story is a clear example of how negative words and attitudes from parents can leave a deep wound in a child shared. But it also shows us that it's possible to heal those wounds and find happiness and fulfillment in our lives when we'll break free from the ties of the past. When dad's friends laugh at you and make jokes about you. This is the story of Peter. He was a father, but he had difficulties connecting with his children. He always felt like he was letting them down and blamed himself for not being the perfect father. Additionally, Peter C. met to constant lie attract people who would eventually betray him. His wife even asked for a divorce because she felt he spent more time with his friends than with his own family. The reason behind this lay in an unresolved family trauma from Peter's childhood. Despite rejecting his father, Peter had become someone similar to him. His unconscious needed to address a betrayal issue related to friends, and this became a priority over his relationship with his wife and children. Peter was trapped in the paternal wound. Peter's trauma traced back to an incident in his childhood when his father, in a drunken state, entered his room, dragged him to the living room, and mocked him in front of his friends. It was a humiliating and traumatic experience that deeply affected Peter. As a result, he couldn't relax in his own home with his wife and children, as he associated relaxation at home with betrayal and humiliation. To escape those feelings, Peter avoided spending Timmy at home and sought refuge in the company of his friends. However, he found that what he was trying to escape from a film, he encountered outside of it. He always ended up being the subject of mockery from some friend. It was impossible to run away from what his unconscious was projecting. The key was to pay attention to the message his unconscious was sending him in order to process and heal from it. When Peter received the divorce letter, he finally became aware of his problem. He decided to seek therapeutic help and work diligently to heal his wounds. Throughout this process, he managed to save his marriage and rebuild the relationship with his children. Gradually, he was able to free himself from the bonds of the past and find a new way to connect with his family. He had to forgive the humiliation he experienced with his father and release the traumatic memory from his body. That's when he learned to relax and open up emotionally. My husband doesn't fully commit to me because of his controls him. This is the story of Maggie and Ricardo. Maggie always felt the emotional absence of her husband. Any decision they had to make as a couple, whether it was future plans or just planning a vacation, ended in arguments. Maggie felt alone making decisions and carrying the responsibility. Although Ricardo loved his wife, something in his unconscious prevented him from fully engaging in decision making with her. The reason behind this lay in an unconscious loyalty that Ricardo had towards his father. Ricardo's father was emotionally distant, physically present but not involved in family life or expressing his feelings. On the other hand, Ricardo's mother was dominant and controlling, making all decisions at home. From a young age, Ricardo sought to please his mother to make her happy. He supported her decisions and showed her affection to fill the void left by his absent father. Ricardo felt a rejection towards his father for not having experienced his love or presence. However, without realizing it, he ended up following in his father's footsteps and becoming an emotionally distant husband. What Ricardo didn't know was that his father also had an unconscious loyalty to his own father. Ricardo's grandmother was also controlling and used force and verbal violence to control her children while her husband spent time in bars getting drunk. Ricardo's father also carried a wound of emotional abandonment from both parents, but the rejection held towards his father was what led him to become someone similar to him. Ricardo inherited this wound from his father and from a young age, he felt the need to please his mother and avoid conflicts with her. He was being loyal to his father's wound and his unconscious was seeking to heal the dysfunctional relationship with his mother. That's why Ricardo lacked the strength to make decisions. For his unconscious, making decisions was the same mom would get angry, mom's held been control. While Ricardo was physically present in his marriage, he felt like he was fulfilling his role as a goodest band. However, Maggie felt the emotional absence of her husband. To change this dynamic in their marriage, they needed to heal this internal wound that had been passed down through generations. As we can see, all these wounds project themselves interlives, as the unconscious doesn't understand time or space. They affect our current relationships and hinder us from living fully.
The key lies in becoming aware of these wounds and working on their healing, so that we can break free from negative patterns and build healthier and more fulfilling relationships. The hindered ability to give and receive or unleash abundance. There are people who find it difficult to accept something from others, even receiving gifts makes them uncomfortable. This difficulty in receiving and also in giving has a simple explanation related to the role of the father in newer unconscious. Historically, the father is expected to be the provider, the one who gives. If we had a responsible fathrathelm who fulfilled his role of providing for his spouse and children, we probably learned to give without issues. Beautiful parents haven't been responsible and have spent money in irresponsible things like alcohol or bars, that's when we can develop difficulties in giving. And on the other hand, if mother hasn't received what she needed, we also learn it to receive. On the other hand, if we had a present, responsible, and generous father, it's more likely that we learn it to give and receive in a balanced way. In this case, we have witnessed set a model of healthy giving and receiving within the family unit. However, when the father has been absent, neglectful, or failed in his role as a provider and protector, this can create an imbalance in our ability to give. If the father didn't fulfill his role of providing and emotionally sustaining the family, we may have internalized the belief that we don't deserve it to receive, or that giving is the only way to get recognition and love. Furthermore, if we've witnessed our mother or other female figures in our environment not receiving what they needed, we can also learn that receiving is selfish or even dangerous. This distorted perception can hinder our ability to accept help, emotional support, or gifts from others. In these cases, often when we're asked, we say everything is fine, I don't need anything. We don't have the internalized capacity to say, I need this. When at home, mom remains silent and in tassert her emotional needs, it's difficult to learn to assert ours. It's important to consider as well that the ability to ask for and receive is closely related to the experiences of frustration might have had in our childhood in terms of what we perceived we didn't receive. If we hold resentment for what we didn't get, we might be blocking the flow of abundance in our lives. In this way, it's not worth continuing to justify injure, as it only harms ourselves. Whenever we heal the paternal wound, the flow of abundance is unleashed in our lives, and the ability to embrace and focus on success becomes possible. Exercise 4. Reflection. Observe carefully and sincerely the judgments you have towards your father. The next time you are in front of him, pay attention to the thoughts and judgments that eris in your mind. Answer these questions. What judgments do you have towards your father? When you are in front of him, observe your mind thinking or judging about him. Do you judge how he faced or used to face difficulties? How did he manage money? How did he handle emotions? What kind of relationship did he have with his respective parent? The next time you have an encounter with Heimer think about them, have the determination not to judge or feel threatened at if I don't. Remember that the intention is not to justify harmful or detrimental behaviors, but to understand the context in which they developed and how they may have affected your relationship with your father. This exercise invites you to adopt a more compassionate and understanding perspective, recognizing that we are all imperfect human beings in a process of growth and learning.